welcome to Hello World and a new episode. Um, today we have the opportunity to vis visit uh, Dhaka in Bangladesh and we're going to find out more about how the digital industry services has um, developed uh, Bangladesh and uh, grown there. Um, we're going to meet uh, Imshes, who is the managing director of uh, Graphic People. Um, so Imshes started a design studio in, in uh, Dhaka in Bangladesh as a Danish-Bangladesh um, joint venture. But before we start, uh, Magnus, you're the marketing manager at uh, Stratetech and you've been working with marketing for many years. So when you choose agencies or production, uh, marketing production company, what, what are you looking for? Uh, I've been involved in uh, several uh, evaluations of agencies during the years and uh, I think like always when you're hiring some kind of consultant, you want them to know and understand your business. That's one side of the coin. The other is that you want them to be very in innovative and playful. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like a paradox, but that's important. I also think uh, they have to know and see the holistic uh, view of your systems and platforms. Otherwise, you will build up silos for yeah. different kind of processes and. Uh, that will be difficult to integrate uh, later on. And to summarize it, I would say it's always difficult when you're talking about how to measure things and when it comes to campaigns and programs and so on. But I think in some cases you have to be very skilled on the Romy way of calculating things, uh, things uh, uh, that I'm talking about returning on marketing investments. Yep. So uh, we have something in common, me That's and Imshas. And when you're saying company names like Graphic People, I'm waking up. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, invited uh, Imshas Ilahi today from Graphic People. So uh, welcome to Hello World. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Thank you very much for having me here. You just told us that you are five hours before us and you have a warm and rainy weather in Bangladesh. Absolutely. Yeah, and we are... Very hot and rainy season yeah. right now here. So uh, you are the managing director of the company Graphic People and you are located with your head office in Dhaka in Bangladesh. Uh, you have built a world-class studio with uh, approximately 250 employees. Could you share with us uh, how the offering is looking like and uh, the advantages for clients investing in your services? Absolutely. Um, so. Bangladesh doesn't ring a bell when you talk about outsourcing to anybody, to tell you frankly. <laughs> you know, when we talk about outsourcing, people talk about, think about India yeah. first, then probably Philippines, or if it's near shore, like it could be Poland or uh, Czech Republic. But why Bangladesh and why it's here and how we connect to the uh, global industry is a very interesting story. Uh, in your introduction, you did say about, uh, you know, it's a joint venture. So, yes, uh, we were very lucky to have a Nordic partner based in Copenhagen. And we also have a Bangladeshi uh, partner uh, which came in and they together decided to take a leap into the digital era back in 2004 when we were still connected uh, with a VSAT satellite. You know, you can imagine back in those days, like, you know, doing simple things is to be a big effort where you upload or download files. But I guess it was a vision that kind of um, kick-started this company. Um, and we, I'm part of a very uh, capable team which has been uh, behind this operation for the last 15 plus years and bringing up to where it is today. And offering uh, services uh, mainly for advertising industry. Uh, so we are kind of an agency which specializes in campaign deliverables uh, for agencies around the world and um, we have uh, the uh, we had the opportunity or still have the opportunity to work with some of the biggest brands uh, providing digital services um, and also um, offshore IT development services from Dhaka Bangladesh yeah so one of your clients is one of Sweden's biggest uh, companies in, in, Without saying in the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can. Yeah. No, I saw that IKEA was one of your clients. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. And Volvo as well. Mm, all right. Uh, let's uh, put it this way. Uh, when you say IKEA and uh, Volvo, uh, they are not necessarily directly our clients, but we do work for them via various agencies, right? Yeah. So 
Um, when you're in outsourcing, probably the work would end up in Dhaka after it has gone through a couple of agencies, you know, uh, somebody yeah. wins the, uh, the pitch and they involve a few other suppliers to come in uh, on board depending on the capabilities. So yes, I've been part of uh, agency offerings where we have worked with some of the brands, uh, big brands of uh, coming out of uh, Sweden and also in the Nordics. Yeah. So during these years, marketing has really changed as such. I mean, we used to be traditional, a lot of print and ads and so on. And then the whole digitalization, it became digital channels, basically. And, uh, and I'm thinking print in itself as well has changed from, from being, you know, the off print and all that before. And, and now it's more digitally done. So how did you manage that trans transition? And, and what do you think the importance has been for your, for your growth? Because I could imagine that moving more digital is really making it more easy for you to, to, um, to offer the servicing services that you are. Right. So I think, uh, I mean, this transition has been uh, very much part of our journey because when we started the operation back in early 2000, you know, industry was still predominantly print driven. Yeah. A lot of ad spend was uh, in press, uh, probably in television also, but not that much in the, um, on the digital side of things and website um, or in trying to be innovative when you are using this, this channel to reach out to your prospective customers. So we have seen this change taking place in the industry. Uh, when, when we set up the operation in 2004, we set it up as a print production studio, you know, desktop publishers, graphic designers working on pre-press um, deliverables. Then we saw this shift happening, you know, and uh, we kind of uh, started doing digital production from 2008 uh, with very basic, you know, static banners and then we moved into flash banners and we saw that, you know, it evolved into HTML5 and a lot of email work came in, uh, websites came in. So yes, uh, we saw this shift happening and we invested in people, investing in onboarding work. But at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, you know, being in Bangladesh, we were not blessed to have the best uh, in class when it comes to uh, IT infrastructure. So our growth kind of uh, also piggybacked on, on these things that when the country kind of evolved and uh, improved itself uh, in, in when it comes to infrastructure, we also saw our business uh, grow accordingly when we were more stable, more capable of handling bigger workloads or even setting up operation which we are able to handle uh, and deliver the speed that is needed uh, when we are working with the agencies. Yeah. Okay, um, you have a worldwide, worldwide clients in your portfolio. And uh, as we mentioned here before, you are working uh, within all time zones and 24-7 approach. What's the challenge when it comes to finding new people? Because it's a new way of working and uh, for many. And uh, so what's, <coughs> what's the challenge and uh, how to get it to work? Right. So I think, I mean, you know, when, when we uh, work here in Bangladesh and uh, we work for countries not in this region, rather in a different time zone altogether, there are challenges, you know, there are challenges uh, because when we are closing office, we see US opening up, or when we're midday, we see Europe opening up, or even when we're working for clients in APAC, uh, you know, we come into office when half of their day is gone. Yeah. So in order to remain connected and in order to remain seamless, uh, it, there is no other option but to be flexible uh, when we approach these time zone challenges. So the only way we can do this is, uh, you know, have our uh, talents work in different time zones uh, and uh, working in different shifts so that they cover the major markets. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's sometimes difficult. It's a difficult. It was a difficult sell when we started the operation because there were not many companies offering similar services. Uh, there were challenges uh, in onboarding resources, but as we grew in size and also we saw other companies coming into the market, the IT uh, industry itself embraced uh, this shift pattern of working uh, and people saw that um, you know there is a growth opportunity both in terms of uh, learning new things and also excelling uh, in their own uh, area of, um, of uh, interest. So that brought in a lot of people. Uh, but I guess it was a big mind shift, a mindset shift that took place. Um, and I think the growth in the IT and digital services from Bangladesh kind of um, helped changing this mindset where there's a lot of opportunities, employability. 
uh, both for men and women uh, here in Bangladesh. Um, so that kind of opened it up. And also a few things that you have to ensure when you want people to come here and work in multiple shifts because uh, you do have to take care of the health and well-being uh, so they're able to, um, you know, work, you know, without any worry that how they will go back home or how they're going to come to office when you are closing the office in an odd hour or you're starting up in a very odd hour. So, you know, we do provide transportation facilities um, to our employees so that they don't have to worry about it. So I think these things kind of help people uh, take up uh, this challenge because, you know, working in shift is a bit challenging because you do have to kind of balance your work, life, family, uh, because you do, you will end up working in very odd hours in some times of the month. Yeah. yeah. If we exclude a situation today with traveling and so on, do you have any consultants, <coughs> sorry, traveling to your customer, client sites? Uh, we do both way, like uh, when we onboard any new client, uh, we always encourage clients to come and see the facility because uh, seeing is believing always, uh, we, we say that, because, um, you know, sending your work thousands of kilometers away, uh, you are always um, in doubt that whether it's going to come back to you on time, uh, whether it's it will be handled by right kind of people or not. So those challenges are there. So we always encourage that come and see what facility we have built here. So that gives you a lot of confidence to, um, you know, um, to kind of extend the, the uh, type of work that you're only doing or grow in terms of the business. At the same time, we also send our people over to um, learn new technologies or onboard a new client process. So it's both way, um, though we work digitally, but human interaction is very important, uh, mainly uh, due to we work with people from different culture. Uh, different location in the world, so there are different ways of uh, addressing the same issues uh, by different clients differently. And in the day, it's people we work with, uh, not machines. So uh, we are very much um, uh, in favor, and we always emphasize that, uh, despite using all kind of digital uh, forms of communication, we should have a, a personal connection to the clients so that it facilitates uh, the work. Yeah. So, as you were mentioning, your company uh, or graphic people started as a joint venture between Denmark and or Danish and, and Bangladesh um, corporation. And, and Denmark has a program where where it's been possible for uh, Danish companies to invest in. I think mainly Asia. Actually, that's where it's at least been more, most successful. So, if you're a company that wants to sort of try out to offshore some of your services. Yeah, it's been the possibility to uh, to start joint ventures that way, and I think it's been really important for the for the Asian development actually during in within digital services. What's your opinion on that? How um, you know how important is it for Bangladesh, for example, with these foreign investments, these kind kind of programs, and how has it sort of uh, affected the digital transformation of your society and the country? Right, um, the this joint venture kind of happened, uh, you know, I mean, it was not something that was planned for. Uh, it kind of happened in a, in a, it's like a beautiful story behind it. The back in early 2000, uh, Danish government used to run a B2B program where yeah. they used to support Danish businesses, find partners in the countries where the project was implemented. Uh, and they did focus on different sectors in different time. Back in early 2000 was the IT sector. So they encourage a lot of companies from Denmark to come into Bangladesh, find suitable partners to set up operation, which will be beneficial both for Denmark and also for Bangladesh. Uh, so for Denmark, it was access to a, a low cost uh, location where they could uh, enjoy a cost um, advantage and also probably, uh, you know, some time advantage also considering that it is ahead of them. And also for the country where they would implement the project, like country like Bangladesh, it could generate employment. Uh, it will also impact the overall economic growth of the country. So I think it's a great way of uh, helping countries, um, you know, uh, to navigate through poverty. And uh, instead of giving away direct aid, I think creating jobs kind of help uh, you to reach the, uh, you know, reach the population faster. Yeah. Uh, than any other means and ways. So I think it was a great way uh, and, uh, you know, the overall IT industry in Bangladesh kind of shifted uh, a gear when uh, we had this program implemented here. Yeah. 
Yeah. So how far and, would uh, you, you say? Also, that, yeah. You also Sorry. talked about uh, ask about this. You know how it has involved the digital services. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, as uh, you know, IT itself evolved, uh, and we also had we have seen that government invest heavily uh, in the infrastructure side of things. You know, it kind of um, uh, accelerated the whole thing. And one thing I want to mention that government in Bangladesh encourages foreign investment. You know, there are a lot of um, you know. Um, ways and means companies can come in and take the opportunity here and IT does enjoy some of the one of the best benefits um, that is rolled out by the government so it it is it kind of has has also helped the um, in the industry um, change and kind of evolve to where it is today yeah you mentioned some um, things about the cultural aspects before is there any more major thing you want to <clears throat> talk about when it comes to both your relationship with your international clients as well as the teams you are working with or the cultural aspects within your company? If you should summarize it, what's the right. core about it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, when I say culture, I think it's about how we approach work. Uh, it also about how uh, you know, gender is impacted when we are kind of uh, opening up opportunities uh, for people to come and work here. I think uh, these are the factors that kind of, you know, we being part of Bangladesh, we are not, uh, we cannot ignore the cultural nuances that we have here or the social structure or the practices of that are in place. But I guess uh, empowerment of uh, men and women both has uh, helped us kind of change some of the cultural practices, uh, you know, allowing uh, women to come out and work uh, and when they feel secure uh, at work and um, they see opportunity to grow and earn and contribute back to their family and the society as a whole. I think that that has been the biggest cultural shift that we see here, that and woman empowerment and women having the opportunity to uh, you know, equally contribute to the growth of the country. Uh, also, uh, you know, cultural changes that includes, you know, uh, uh, allowing, uh, you know, coming and accepting flexible work hours or working in multiple shifts around the clock, um, working as a team, uh, you know, working uh, at an office uh, which is has an which is an open office. You know, these are all cultural things. You know, yeah. these are small things that uh, change things inside you. Uh, you know, uh, and when you work with your client. Um, you know, you know the the uh, client in Nordics they would have a uh, certain uh, aspects in the design that uh, they would appreciate or look forward to versus somebody from Southern Europe where you will see uh, impacts their taste in the design and the overall look and feel of the work that we produce. So I think these are also you know cultural aspects that we take into consideration when uh, we kind of work in an industry like this. So these has been also um, you know we see that impacting people also, you know, how the people dress up, how people choose colors and do things and, you know, uh, their um, in a reaction to uh, situation. These are also very important that how yeah. do you react, you know, and how do you, uh, uh, and when, when things are not in control, how do you, uh, you know, um, pacify the situation? How do you uh, try to connect with your clients? Uh, a client in Japan or China would have a different type of reaction to versus a client coming from uh, other parts of the world. So. I think these you can only learn when you interact with people uh, yeah. and when, when you are working very closely with people. So I think these changes we see. Um, another thing I want to mention that like in our office, uh, it's an open office. It's a very uh, flat organization where people uh, of, of all, um, I would say, um, all kind of uh, um, their role in the company uh, would enjoy the same benefits or enjoy the same facilities in office, which is also a big cultural shift. Uh, in a society like uh, Bangladesh, like in, in many other Asian countries, it's very hierarchical. Yeah. So breaking down these mental barriers uh, is a big cultural shift uh, that we feel that we always try to do here. Yeah. I'm, I'm really fascinated. I, I mean... I'm just reflecting that there will be few companies that you could go to that would have a greater learning or knowledge of different cultures and how you address marketing and, and those kind of questions than, you, than if you go to an offshore country, a company actually, because you really have the benefit of working with all types of clients. Although it's a challenge, but it's also really a benefit uh, to the client, I can imagine, in that way. What kind of personalities are you looking for when it comes to recruitment? 
I mean, competences uh, uh, is one thing, but when it comes to personalities, to uh, fit into this setup you're talking about, this uh, environment. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we all, we, I mean, I personally believe in that. In the company, is all about people. You know, you can always, you know, buy the best machine or have the most uh, well decorated office, but uh, it's end of the day, it's people who are sitting behind the machines uh, who are delivering the work. Uh, so uh, for us uh, hiring, when we're hiring, I think the character of the individual matters a lot, like whether the person is open, whether that person is open to criticism, open to new ideas, uh, proactive, uh, because um, skills can be developed. You know, skills can yeah. be developed through education, through training, but the individual needs to have that uh, intent to take the opportunity to learn and grow. I think that's the key factor when we look in and also uh, accom being accommodative because uh, as I mentioned that we work uh, in an IT outsourcing company um, and you have to keep in mind that um, all the projects that we take over are, are, are not necessarily will be always going by the SLA and uh, following the same timeline or yeah. uh, following the same well-defined process. You know, there will be challenges, there will be times when you, know, you will have a lot of constraint uh, to start the project, to deliver the project, where you have to be accommodative, you have to uh, fast thinker, you have to bring in uh, the innovation uh, when, when it comes to designing and you know uh, the delivery. Yeah. So I think these are the factors we always look in, that human character, uh, that's what makes the biggest difference uh, when you're working in your organization. Yeah. Do, you see, do, you, do you see any major trends when it comes to the way universities and schools are working? to uh, enter this market situation, both the digital, digital uh, world as well as the increased international work environment. Do you see any yeah, trends I think, uh, on that? Yeah, it's good to do see because, um, I mean, when we grew up, we didn't have access to internet. You know, uh, Our uh, knowledge was limited to what we could see uh, in a television channel where we did not even have a satellite channel. So it was only one television channel we watched, right? Yeah. So whatever we learned was from the society around us and the books that we read, uh, maybe watching movies, uh, you know, but today when uh, children are growing up, they're having access to information via internet, via, you know, television channels, um, you know, uh, social media, you name it. So I think they are absorbing much more than what previous generation did. Yeah. And that is impacting their outlook towards the world, you know, uh, and um, it, there are positive sides and negative sides to it, like what type of information they're exposed to also kind of builds their uh, character and the way they look at the world. So that's very important. But the, the opportunity is immense. And we see when we are looking at uh, people, who, you know, new recruits or new hires, we do see a change. Um, you know, there are also, you know, good sides and bad sides. Like, you know, nowadays people tend to have everything ready for them. You know, it's yeah. like ready to eat meal kind of thing. You know, everything has to be there. But uh, back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years back, probably people would have taken an extra step to find that information, go to the library, yeah. read a book. Uh, today, you just go to Google and uh, search for it. You know, yeah. That kind of changed your human behavior uh, and also your approach towards solving problems. Yeah. You know, uh, how you would like to solve a problem. Do you want to take the easy way out or, you know, you want to kind of uh, work your way through it and uh, find the right answer? So we see, you know, people coming out with a different attitude. And there are every generation, you know, every few years we see a big shift in how people are, um, you know, reacting to the same situation. Yeah. Yes. And but it has it has been a very positive. It has a very positive impact here. And we do see talents coming out uh, who are much more broader in their thinking, uh, much more intelligent, much more uh, technical, technically sound and more um, open to ideas. Oh, great. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Imchas. It's been really interesting to talk to you and to learn more about Bangladesh. This is really the best thing about this show is that the opportunity to meet people from all over the world. So thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. You, and, uh, thank you for having me here. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. So what do you think about my skills in HubSpot, <laughs> WordPress and uh, <laughs> Illustrator? Do you think I can send in an application form? Yeah, probably you could. I don't know. I think I think it's really fascinating about the the um, you know, can you imagine having to work with clients from all over the world, really, and, and you know, 
understand that culture without having maybe visited the country or mm -hmm. you know it's 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 kind of uh, fascinating that mm. it's possible to to be done um, when do you think they start offshoring themselves yeah that's really a good question where 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 do bangladesh companies uh, go yeah. to to get their services yeah. so yeah so thank you for joining today um and um Continue. No, we're not saying subscribing to Stay YouTube tuned. anymore, but we're saying follow us on LinkedIn so you don't miss any episodes. So thank you and bye bye. Bye.